In this video, we'll see how to paginate an Airtable collection inside WeWeb and how to let the user search dynamically inside this collection. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually search inside the collection. Because you see here in my WeWeb app, all of these uh, properties, they are coming from um, Airtable. So this Airtable base actually with all the properties. The thing is, okay, I only have 29 properties, but if I were to have like something like 300 uh, properties and display them all at once, it would be really hard for the end user browser to um, display all of these properties because that would mean like a huge API request to Airtable, loading lots of data inside the user browser because keep in mind that WeWeb is a front-end app, so everything happens in the browser, so in, on the, the user device. And also it would take like a really long time to actually display all of these uh, properties. So what we can do is set up a pagination. And a pagination is a way to set pages in the data to only display like X data, X number of data at once. So for example, if I say a pagination at four items, I will only see four properties here, but I will be able as a user to change the pages and see the for next one and then the for next one, etc. until the end. So the way it works is that first for pagination to work, you actually need to make sure if you go in your layouts and on the columns here where the collection is bound, that you bound to the collection and not only the data. So you see here, the data is actually inside properties.data. But what WeWeb does is that it adds metadata to the collection with the total and the offset, for example, which are used to um, paginate this data. So here you see that I have got 29 items with zero offset, so I see everything. But if I were to go inside my properties collections and go inside the sort filter and pagination, if I click on, I can set, for example, a pagination at four and then hit done. And then I only have four houses. And if I go back inside my um, binding, you see here now that I have a limit four, total 29 offset zero. So um, it means that I'm on the first page and I'm only seeing four items over 29. So to let the user be able to um, change pages, I can go to the add panel, search for paginator, drag and drop it at the end, and let's set up on the paginator item some margin top so that you can breathe a little, so like 16. And the only thing I have to do is go up on the collection setting and select the connection, the collection, sorry, I want to paginate. So here, properties. And automatically, we web set up this paginator to work with the uh, properties collection. So if I go in preview mode, and I hit page two, you see that now I have four other, page, uh, four other properties, page three, etc. And if I go back on my binding, so on the columns, you see here that now my limit is still four, my total 29, but my offset if, is eight. That means that we bypass the first eight properties inside this collection because we are page three. And WeWeb does this automatically for you. The next thing I want to do is actually let the user search for some text inside the properties. For example, searching by names. So here I drag and drop a search bar, uh, but you can find it back if you search for search bar here. A search bar is an input which stores the value that the user typed. So for example, if I go in preview mode and I search for chateau, if I go inside my um, debug tab, inside the variables, and I search for my search bar, you see here, it got the value chateau. So now I can use this value to search in my collection. So if I go in the data tab in my properties collection and the sort filter and pagination, I can add a filter with a condition. And here I will select which column I want to filter on. So I will select the name because I want to search 
in the uh, properties names and I can set many comparison like contains, does not contain, start with, and with. But here contains is sufficient. And instead of entering, um, or should I say this, a static value, I can bind it to a dynamic value. So here I will bind it to a variable, which is actually the search bar value. So it's chateau. I will also hit the ignore if empty so that if the search bar is empty, the filter won't do anything. And if I hit save and test, I only get one item because I only have one chateau. So if I were to search, for example, for villa, I can go back in my collection, test my filter again, and get many villas. And you see here, the pagination is still working because I have so many villas that I need two pages for them. And we web does it for you. The only thing, lastly, is that we want this to be reactive. So every time the user is um, setting a search, we want the um, collection to be fetched again, so to like be loaded again. So the way to do this is actually click on the search uh, bar, go in the workflows, and click to create a new workflow. Here we'll select the on-change trigger, meaning that every time something like the user types something in the search bar, the value is changing, so it will execute this workflow. Then we'll add an action, and we'll search for fetch collection. So fetch collection is simply this, it will reload the collection inside the WeWeb app. And then we'll say that we want to fetch the collection properties. And now if I close it and I go into preview mode, and I enter wooden, for example, you see that it changed and it um, fetched Airtable again. Um, I only have two houses which have wooden in their name. And if I hit Villa again, I get again the villas. And if I remove everything, I will get all the properties, so all the, all the houses. And that's how you set up a dynamic search and pagination in, inside a Airtable collection inside WeWeb.